Good morning. By the time you're seeing this, it probably is Christmas morning or maybe after. You're just in time because I'm going to go over the techniques and the steps to make the perfect cup of coffee using a French press. For our purposes today, I will be using whole beans. And the first thing we're going to do is pour some purified water into the heating pot. And you may have a variety of different types of kettles. My kettle will run until the water actually boils. Just remember, when you go to buy your coffee beans, you want to get whole coffee beans and not pre-ground coffee. Okay, now the beans need to be measured and if you are using a scale, you can measure out 55 grams. But I wanted to show you that 55 grams of whole beans is almost one full cup. And once you do this a few times, you'll remember that. The second thing we're going to do, actually the third thing we're going to do, is grind the beans. And you'll notice that I am pointing to the number two. And there is a number one, which is the very coarsest of grinds, but the number two and the number one are the grind settings, not five or six. Those are very fine settings and would give you more of an espresso, which you do not want when you're using the French press. And once the beans have ground, you're going to measure out the actual ground beans and we're going to put two to three. I like my coffee a little on the stronger side because I'm going to doctor it up as they say and add some things to it and so if the coffee is too weak in the beginning that nice beautiful coffee flavor does not come through. So I use three tablespoons. Next we're going to add the hot water. And when you add your hot water, the first thing you're going to do is just put a splash of it into your French press. And that's just to get the grounds wet and let them sit for about 30 seconds. Once the coffee has sat there for 30 seconds, you can add the rest of the water almost to the top. You want to leave a little bit of room for the plunger and then you're going to nestle the lid and leave the plunger up. Do not press down. <laughs> Set your timer for six minutes. And as the timer is ticking away, you then can preheat your cup with the rest of the water. And you can prepare any of the other coffee fixins that you may enjoy in your coffee. Now I'm not going to put all of this in my coffee, but I wanted to show you that sometimes I use cacao powder, sometimes I use Primal, which is a coffee creamer, and sometimes I use uh, the birthday cake flavor, and sometimes I just use heavy cream. So make sure that you empty out the water and you're starting with a nice, hot, clean cup, and then you can begin to add any of the extras Remember, the timer is still ticking. You have about six minutes to do all of this. So I'm gonna add some of the cacao powder. I'm gonna add a little bit of stevia. That's my sweetener of choice. And because the cacao powder is a little on the bitter side, it's not completely, but it's not very sweet. There is no sugar at all. I do add the stevia to sweeten it up a little bit. And then I also, will stir it either with a spoon or if I'm adding a few other things, in this case, some collagen powder, I have an electric mixer. And this little handheld number is fabulous and I only use it when there's just a small amount in the cup because it'll really get going and <laughs> you don't wanna be spraying the walls with your coffee mixture. So when I'm initially putting together my mixture, that's when I'll use this to froth it up and um, it does a really good job of mixing the cacao, the protein, the collagen, whatever I'm going to be adding to my coffee. 
Make sure you check on your timer, and when the timer goes off, you're ready to push the plunger. You're going to do this very smoothly and easily. Not too difficult. If it is difficult, it means that the grounds are too fine. Now I'm using a little sieve just so I can show you what particles you may find in the coffee. And normally you would not need to use this, but I wanted to show you that every now and then, depending on the French press that you're using, you may have a few particles left over. And they're going to be quite large, so this gives you an idea of the size of the grind. That's a coarse grind. And I use a tall mug, but that's about 10 ounces of water, and that gives me room to add my extras, and then of course my whipped cream. Whenever you go to rinse out your French press, do not dump the coffee grounds down the sink. By the time some grease gets added to them, it can become uh, like mud in your drain. But what I do is I always add a lot of water, I stir it up, and then I water my plants. There's a lot of magnesium in the coffee grounds, so that's something nice that you can do for your plants. So that about wraps it up. So just as a recap, the first thing you want to do is pour your water into your heating device and get that going. And then as that is heating up, you will grind the beans and you can decide how many beans you need. Roughly, you want enough beans to make three tablespoons of coffee per cup or per 10 ounces. And then once you get your beans ground and the water is hot, you want to let the water sit about 30 seconds after it has heated up to a boil and that keeps it from scalding the beans. Once you have that sitting for maybe 30 seconds, you pour a little bit onto the beans, swirl them around, again, maybe 20, 30 seconds, and then pour the rest of the water onto the beans. Close it up, do not plunge it, keep the plunger up at the top. Once you put the plunger on, set your timer for six minutes. If you like a weaker cup of coffee, then you can set it for four and a half or five minutes. If you like stronger, you could go up to seven. Once the timer goes off, you want to plunge the coffee right away. You want to press that plunger down because as the coffee sits in the French press, it will start to get bitter. So do not leave it in the French press. Pour a little in your cup, come back to it later. Don't do that. You want to go ahead and plunge it, pour it into the cup. And if you happen to have made one of the large French press sizes, then pour this into another carafe or another device, another coffee server that you have on hand. By the way, if you look online, there are different types of French presses. This one is a more expensive one, primarily because of the plunger, and you will see the difference. And then my little one was a cheaper version, but I like it when I'm just doing one cup at a time. You may wonder what the difference is whenever you go to buy a French press. A lot of it has to do with the actual filtering mechanism. This one that we have has a double basket or a double filter, if you will, and it really does filter out all those little particles that we saw whenever I poured from the mirrored uh, little pretty one. I, I don't mind using the um, strainer to keep those little pieces out. And then my blue one just makes more, but it actually has a really nice plunger and filter system also. It's a, a ceramic style. So make sure you look at the plunger, the screen, see how it fits. It will come apart for cleaning. And that's one thing that you want to make sure you do is clean it very thoroughly after each use. It's not difficult to do. You just don't want to let some of those coffee grounds cake up. There are oils and things that will make a big difference in your fabulous cup of coffee. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe to my channel, it would be great if you did because that tells YouTube that people like it. Also, if you give it a thumbs up, then that tells YouTube that somebody else might like it and they will add my video 
alongside someone else's. So that helps the analytics of what YouTube does. And then of course, if you ring the bell, you'll be notified of when I put out another video, which I try to do once a week. So that's all for me. Hope you have a great day and I hope you enjoy your cup of coffee. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.